What is up guys, this is Turbo here and welcome to episode 79 of the FIFA 14 career mode. Following on from last episode, we have West Bromwich Albion again. This time in the FA Cup, we are at home once more and it should be another good match to test us. We did win narrowly, narrowly last game. Uh, we won 1-0 in the league thanks to a Musa Sissoko, I think it was 54th minute goal. It was a good goal and it was a good strong team performance but again, I'm just going to have to remind you guys that we're not in a very good run of form lately. Um... With just something like one win in our last five games, and it's really not good at the minute. We're dropping points left, right, and centre, and uh, there is um, a possibility that Chelsea and the other teams in the league will be catching up very soon, and we do not want that possibility. Good save for Mignolet early on. Two denied by Spromwich Albion, but this game was going to be a fiery one. Colocini misses the header, the uh, the second defender misses the tackle, and then Sessegnon manages to score for his new club against Newcastle United. Uh, someone who is, I'm sure he's very familiar with having played the many, uh, many um, time and wear derbies, of course. Um, but then... What a goal. Shola Amiobi, take a bow, my son. Just look at the skill involved. He took it. He sort of flicked it back up to himself. But uh, he took it away from the defender in doing so. And managed to create the space. Here it is. Here's the initial shot from Joe Allen. Good block by the defender. Flick by Shola. Getting away from the defender. And then just to turn and smash into the bottom corner. Unstoppable. Very much easy to deal with. And then this is what happened. This is this is not lagging, guys. This is This is not me. This is not you. This is literally what my game was like. Um, for those split seconds. I don't know why it happened. It wasn't the recording. As you can see, the recording was fine. And uh, it wasn't me. It wasn't the game. I just don't know what happened. But um, we conceded. Minutes later, Sassanian went through and we conceded again. So all of a sudden, maybe not really my fault, but um, all of a sudden we are 3-1 down. And um, we're looking for a way back into this match. Pretty much the same story last time. Um, but this time, we have an advantage. We've already scored. Uh, but And we are at home. Um, and it's a cup game and we want to see us progress in the cup but uh, at the same time I have my younger team out sorry about that uh, players like Dongu and Sholamiobi don't really have enough first team experience for me or oh, Dale Jennings Dale Jennings not really the first on the list though don't really have as much first team experience for me to uh, to trust them in playing in the Premier League and that's why I play in the FA Cup because it's sort of a competition where I can just see who's the best um, who's progressing the best and why um, a lovely play by Bakuna to set up Dongu Dongu really should have scored Bakuna himself should have scored on the rebound and I don't know how we're not 3-2 yet but then we have the final chance right before half time and this is what I mean they're not Premier League players, guys. They're not first team quality. And if that pass, if that had been Loic or uh, or Romelu, then I think that would have definitely been a goal. It would have resulted in being a goal. But it wasn't. It was Dongu, and uh, we ended up still being only three one, and we were down three one as well. So we had work to do. Joe Allen here trying to get involved, giving it to Shola, giving it back to Joe over the top for Shola. Just a little bit too much. Uh, he actually he actually had his run checked by the uh, West Bromwich Harrow defender. In my opinion, that's a foul, but whatever. We carry on. Bakuna getting involved. Lovely shot. Good save by the West Brom keeper. Unfortunate to not see that nestle into the back of the net. Still 3-1 down, guys, and I'm fe I feel I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time is what I'm trying to say. Bakuna whipping it back both to Dongu. He can't win the header, and uh, this is why we need a centre-attacking midfielder and a, uh, a striker. A striker to bang in the goals and a centre-attacking midfielder to just create all the opportunities. When it comes to the edge of the box, situations like this, a, a good centre-attacking midfielder, apart from Kinsuke Honda, um, will know what to do, not just lose the ball like that. Final chance for all, nearing the final chance for us. And Alberto Pereira finally gets a goal. It's been a while since he scored a goal for the club, so it's nice for him to be able to come into the team uh, occasionally and score. And uh, it was a really nice goal, actually. He, he hit it with the outside of his boot. Oh, no, he hit it with the laces and it nestled into the bottom corner, uh, right past uh, Foster in the goal. And um, we will take that, and we can go and um, progress with that in the game. We still have something to salvage. 3-2 down, and we still have a little bit of game to go. But... This time it was West. It wasn't going to be. It was going to be West Bromwich Albion. They're going to stick around, and they're eventually going to get the win against those guys. Um, it was a good team performance, I suppose. But in the end, it just shows the squad depth that I have. It's not really all that deep. Um, having to rely on players like Dongu and Alberto uh, for not really big important matches, but for for medium scale matches like the FA Cup. Well, I can improve on that in the transfer market. I am not selling Kentuke. He is one of my best players at the club after Kabai left. And uh, he's very much valuable to the team. I feel that we can't do much without him because he's uh, he's probably one of the only guys who can play in that CAM role. And um, he's in good form at the minute. He's been getting a lot of assists, a lot of goals. Perhaps not not one, not one a player that really stands out all the time. But uh, he, he definitely is there. He contributes to the team performances. And uh, he is the reason... Uh, why we win most of the time. He creates the chances, creates the place, knows what to do. He's the Juan Mata 
of previous years uh, at Chelsea. So, still going to offer for Kevin Prince by attacking. Like I say, I just need another centre attacking midfielder who uh, who has the skill to rival Kensuke Honda and maybe even better him, but uh, probably not. Um, Kevin Prince by like I said, still first on my list, but I'm getting towards the end of my patience. Uh, I feel I am overpaying for him, 10 million in Taylor. I just don't feel it's going to be enough. But uh, speaking of strikers, here we go. Jermaine Defoe, a player who's recently moved to Toronto in real life. I feel that's a big, big shame. I feel Jermaine Defoe is a quality, quality striker. I remember his days at Tottenham. Uh, they were great. They were great. I really loved seeing him put the ball into the back of the net, just run past whole team defences. And uh, he managed to score. And I am I am amazed that we can get him for as cheaply as this. 76 rated. He's like 30 yard of something. But uh, 3 million for Jermaine Defoe? Yes, please. Jesus, who wouldn't take that? Everton thinking they can get a steal for Lukaku. Nope. They want him back and they can't have him. Ryan Taylor has signed an agreement with QPR after his contract expires. What a shame about that. It's not like I play him every game, so I'm not really gutted about that too much. Apologize to Ryan Taylor, but hey. Um... Moving on, you saw that we had a game coming up against Wigan. It's going to be a tough game, as always. Uh, and it's mainly just because we're still not in a good run of form. That defeat in the FA Cup was very disappointing. But um, a good point to rival that is that we have Jermaine. Jermaine Defoe, accept, well, Tottenham accepted the contract offer. Uh, sorry, the transfer offer. And uh, Jermaine Defoe is um, is hopefully about to. That's the contract I proposed to him. I bumped him up to an important player. He's, of course, down the pecking line with Adebayor and Jim, and uh, Roberto Soldado at, uh, at Tottenham. Um, so I feel it's in his best interest and in the clubs for him to move here. And what do you know? Ian Neal wants... Uh, wants well, Man City want Ian Neal on loan. I'm going to reject that because I don't think he's going to get any playing time on loan at Man City. So, um, no thanks. If I don't play him, why would you play him? Moving on, we advance and uh, we finally have a good bit of news. Well, followed by a bad bit first. Um, still not enough. They want, they don't want Ryan Taylor. They don't want 10 million. They don't think it's enough for Kevin Prince Boateng. So this is the of the very edge of my limits. I I think I offer 10.4 maybe. Do I? Yeah, 10.4 million. This is literally what I'm offering. I don't feel I need to offer any more. If they don't accept that, then I will be moving on to other targets. And um, it's a shame. Kevin Prince Boateng would have been a lovely addition to the club. Um, he's, of course, he has previous experience, previous experience in the Premier League, but um, I have a long list of candidates that are more than willing to take his place or potential place in the team. One of them being Lewis Holtby. He's probably the cheapest option on there. Uh, Marco Marin is another good option, and uh, I'm particularly at attracted to him because he's a Chelsea player. And um, of course, for those of you who don't know, I am a Chelsea supporter. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching this episode. It is coming towards the end of the episode. I'm just going to do some inquiries here just to see what sort of prices I can expect for both of those players. But uh, if you have enjoyed it, if you could please leave a like, I would greatly appreciate it. And apart from that, guys, I will see you all in the next episode of this hectic transfer period. Bye.